Good morning. Um, I'm over in Stewart at this recording um, with our son Matt and working on some projects for him and for me also. Um, so I'm coming to you from the Sunday school class of David Sanders, who's the teacher that I, whose class I go to when we're over here visiting. Um, we, uh, Carol is, is not with me over here. Um, so she'll, uh, you have something to look forward to. Next week, you can hear her sing. You can go back and listen to some of her pretty music on some of our, our other recordings. So this morning, we're talking about pursuing wisdom. Um, something that, that, that we all must do and are foolish if we don't. Um, I apologize for not having a tie on, but over here uh, at Covenant Fellowship Baptist Church, um, I jokingly say ties are not allowed, but we're casual this morning and hope that uh, that doesn't bother you. Um, let's have a word of prayer before we begin, okay? And um, we want to remember Jackie Cobb and family in the passing of Glenn, great man. Knew him for years and years. Sometimes we say, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, but they can well say, we miss him, we love him. There's a space here that hurts but he's not lost. We know exactly where he is. He's with the Lord Jesus Christ and more alive now than he's ever been. But let's keep them in our prayers. The Lord will give them peace through this tough time. Father, we do thank you for all of the blessings you've given us. Father, uh, salvation being the beginning. Just so many we can't even name. Thank you. Father, we do pray for Jackie, family. Give them a peace. They know where Glenn is, but it still hurts. Be with them. Give them comfort and help us to comfort them as well. Father, also, we just pray for those in our class who are ill and have had operations and going through tough times, and all of us. As we go through tough times with the virus and the economy and the rioting and some of the stuff that's going on in our country that we frankly thought we'd never see. Help us as Christians, as your children, to know how to respond, how to be a part of the solution, not the problem. And Father, bless us today as we go through some of Proverbs and again, help us to understand what you would have us to understand and again, we pray, help us to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, as we look at pursuing wisdom, we'll notice that there are three sections in the lesson today. Um, Proverbs 8, 6 through 21 is the scripture. It's pursuing wisdom and wisdom itself extremely valuable, powerful, and by the way, we can get it. It's obtainable in the last part of our study. Um, I, I take the beginning of the lesson with the uh, title that the writers have given it, Pursuing Wisdom, and in my mind as I think through that, I go with pursuing first of all, and we ask ourselves, what are we pursuing? Uh, we need to think about that very seriously, of course, because we can pursue all kinds of things and waste a lot of time. But we are pursuing, and I put up here, and following God is how we pursue and secure wisdom. So when we talk about pursuing wisdom, we need to know how we do that. And that's going to become obvious, I think, as we study and then the underlying portion says, God promises to provide his wisdom, 
to those who search for him. As we look at that, we can break that down even, and we see God promises. That's very significant. If God promises something, he always keeps his promise. So let's see if we're reading this a piece at a time. What is God's promise to us? He promises to provide. And we look to God for all of the provision of things that we need. But there's something specific today. We, uh, he promises to provide his, big deal, wisdom, his wisdom. And he makes a distinction here as we go through and we read the scripture. There's the house of wisdom and the house of folly. We know what distinctions are made to see which house we want to be in. And we would have to be a little uh, disturbed, to say the least, to want to live anywhere except in the house of wisdom, the house of God, be a part of his family. And who gets that? To those who search for it, for wisdom? Hmm. We pursue wisdom and we search for it through him. <laughs> so you get an awful lot, as you know, even from the title of our lessons. But let's begin as we look at the scripture. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read just the introduction here because I think it says very well um, where we're headed. God offers, okay, it's here. God offers wisdom by which to live life and to glorify him. He's revealed himself in nature, in his written word, and in Jesus Christ. He's done his part. Even though God has taken the step to reveal his wisdom, okay, he, he, uh, his people, God's people, cannot be passive when it comes to pursuing it. God reveals his wisdom and simultaneously we must pursue the revealed wisdom of God. This pursuit is critical to spiritual maturity and spiritual growth. So that's where we begin. The, uh, and then as we pointed out, the introduction talks about the two houses. And uh, Solomon points out in, uh, that the two houses that we have from which to select, the house of wisdom or the house of folly. As we sometimes say, we report, you decide. And that is so true of so much, if not all, of the scripture. It's there. We have to read it, understand it, know it, pursue wisdom in this case, and it's available. House of wisdom or house of folly. Um, and today, what uh, is happening, we are using or Solomon is using in discussion of wisdom today. It's uh, called uh, personification. And in this, uh, the scripture for today, wisdom is personified, speaking as a, um, uh, a virtuous woman. This virtuous woman is speaking as wisdom. It's, um, it's a little bit like, I, I remember in the, the uh, Citizen Band radios, you know, you can, uh, it would be like Breaker Breaker. This is Billy Bob, and I want to tell you something about wisdom. Or it would say Breaker Breaker. This is wisdom talking to you. Which one would you rather speak to? We have the same situation. Breaker Breaker, this is the Apostle Paul. I want to tell you something about Jesus. That's wonderful. Paul did a tremendous job in recording the word of God. But wouldn't we much rather even above that, as beautiful as that is, have breaker, breaker. This is Jesus talking to you. Which one would you rather hear? Um, the, um, as we said, so wisdom is personified as a virtuous woman. Personification obviously means the uh, wisdom is speaking to us as a person. Wisdom is speaking to us, not Solomon talking to us about wisdom. 
no matter how you put it, it's the word of God that we're talking about. Let's begin reading with verse six. And um, wisdom is speaking, the virtuous woman. And she says, listen. And we, we emphasize this frequently. When Solomon's talking to her, God's talking to you, or instruction is being given, we are to listen and listen carefully and intently and try to understand. For I speak of noble things, wisdom says, and what my lips say is right. Last week we talked about the adulterous woman, for instance, who have lips of honey, but bitterness is what comes from that. The lips of wisdom, what the lips of wisdom says, is right, is right. That's what we want to be a part of. It says, for my mouth tells the truth. My mouth tells the truth in Christ, in scripture. So listen up, wisdom is saying. And wickedness is detestable to my lips. Yuck. I mean, if we see the contrast that's being made here, between right and wrong, wisdom and folly. It's quite obvious where we want to be. All of my words, all, all the words from my mouth are righteous. We think of righteousness. We get to this later as well. We're thinking about our righteousness even through the blood of Christ. But with wisdom, and we have his wisdom, we have righteousness as well as the salvation provided by him. None of my words are deceptive or perverse. None of them. Anything we read from the scripture, the words of wisdom, Christ God, are not deceptive or perverse. All of them are clear. Makes sense. Here's what you're supposed to do. Understand? If you don't, what's wrong? Go back and read it again. Ask the Lord to, <clears throat> as we pray. Lord, help me to read this and understand it and help me apply it in my life today. All of them are clear. To whom? To the perceptive. To the perceptive. God's influence in our lives makes us perceptive of the truths that he wants us to know and to learn. They are right to those who discover knowledge and the way we discover the knowledge that's being spoken of here is through the scripture so that's the introduction this is wisdom speaking to us about the words that come from her lips and the effects we're getting ready to look at so it says so therefore based on what i've just told you wisdom says that being the case accept my instruction it could stop right there, accept it. But he goes on to say, she does, instead of silver, one, my instruction, house of wisdom. The other, silver, in this case, the house of folly. And knowledge, except knowledge, my rather than pure gold. Why is that? Because Wisdom, I, as she is speaking, am better than jewels and nothing desirable, nothing, nothing, nothing desirable, that is desirable here on earth or earth value, which is folly, can equal it. And that we just need to sit and think about that for a bit. All that is said here, knowledge and wisdom of God, worth so much more than this other stuff. House of wisdom, where we want to live. Folly, we want to stay out of that house much as we can. You got a pile of gold worth millions of dollars right there in front of you. Wow. Short term, that looks good. Long term, what does that lead to? As we've said many times, how much gold is enough? Yes. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. And then we get into all kinds of trouble, usually, if we're not careful. But wisdom, we have the long view. It's worth so much more, especially 
in the long run. Wisdom or folly? She says, come with me. That wisdom from God, so much more valuable. Long term, and a lot of the times, even short term. But, you know what I mean? All right. Um, powerful. Uh, verse 12. I, wisdom, share a home with shrewdness. Now, shrewdness, a lot of times, uh, seems like tricky stuff. I want to be shrewd about this and might be deceptive, but not in this case. The word suggests the virtue of prudence and foresight in this case. And have knowledge and discretion. We have knowledge through wisdom, knowledge of the things that we should know of God and his plan for us, and discretion, how to use the knowledge that he gives us in our lives. So plain which one we want to be in, huh? All right, let's go to uh, verse 13. Now, to fear the Lord, now, and in, in fear, we, we know we're talking about the awesome respect for who God is. We, we are not afraid, i.e. I'm scared. We know the power of God, but we also know the love of God, and we count on that. But we know that sin has consequences. But to fear the Lord, respect, revere, worship. The Lord, Jehovah God, is to <clears throat> love him, I, I think is implied here, to love him, and if you love him, we can do the next thing that is instructed, hate evil. I hate arrogant pride, arrogant pride. You know, pride is something we have a problem with. Sometimes we get a little proud of ourselves. Or, and that's why we're always careful to say, rather than being proud, I'm blessed. And I think that that is more, we can be proud of our kids if they do well, but we say, thank you, Lord, we are blessed. We take very little credit. The Lord gives us opportunity to lead our family and what have you, but it's not a matter of pride in self, but pride in God and having been blessed by him. Because that arrogant pride leads to evil conduct and perverse speech. You know, we, we frequently say garbage in, what comes out? Garbage. Um, you know, I, I sometimes use the, I, I like to make brownies that if you put something ugly in your brownies they taste awful well folly says go ahead and do that wisdom says best to leave that out so let's go with the truth uh verse 14 i possess i it's a continuing uh verbiage i possess and i give actually too i'm doing that now good advice and sound wisdom. I give of myself, wisdom is saying, through the Lord Jesus Christ and the scripture and God Almighty. I have understanding and strength, which is something we all want and certainly need. Understanding. Do we understand what's going on in the world today? Well, not technically, but we are strong in knowing that God ultimately is going to be in charge and is in charge sometimes permits things to happen that are very uh, difficult for us to understand. But if we hang on to the fact God is in charge and we use the common sense and the good heart and mind that he's given us and leave the rest to him on what we can't do, we'll be all right. It is by me, wisdom, that kings, I added good, I think that's implied there, good kings, because we have some kings that are not wise and do not use wisdom it is by me that good kings and rulers enact just laws we look at politics today what kind of laws are being passed are they wise laws are they godly laws 
or our politicians, people that we have elected to do this work, are they looking to the Lord for answers? Let's pray yes. We won't be too judgmental, but we know things are not exactly right in the world in which we live, especially here in our country. Um, by me, princes are led, as do nobles and all righteous judges. Judges, is that important? That's, that's one of the most important aspects of our earthly existence here in the U.S. is our court system. We pray that they are godly people. We pray that they do not uh, use politics rather than what the law is, that they are interpreters of the law, not writers of the law. And we see a lot of that. So we have the lower courts, the appellate courts, and the Supreme Court. Those uh, especially, we pray for godly men and women in those positions. Godly men and women as our judges, even here on earth. Then obtainable. So this is all good stuff and we want it. We make up our minds. We want that. Can I get it? Hang in there. Verse 17. Wisdom says, and this is God speaking, I love those who love me and those who search for me find me um, through their search for and accepting Jesus Christ is a, is a long uh, distance answer for that, but that's immediate. For us today in the world in which we live, we accept Jesus Christ. We get, accept the wisdom that comes with a knowledge of him and growing closer to him. And he loves us as we search for him and find him. Um, and it's the, the, their love for godly wisdom came from the growing relationship with the Lord Almighty. So that is something we need to understand as well. In verse 18, the last couple of verses, 18, 19, 20, 21, says, with me are riches. Wait a minute, I thought riches were bad. Obviously, we're talking about a different kind of rich, aren't we? There's earthly riches, our earthly riches, and then the real wealth and riches through God and honor that is lasting wealth and righteousness. Short term, long term, keep that in mind. Um, we are, uh, it says lasting wealth and righteousness, our righteousness as we've said before, our righteousness comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. His righteousness bestowed upon us as we accept the gift of salvation that he has provided. Need to remember that. My fruit is better than solid gold. My harvest than pure silver. I walk in the ways of righteousness along the paths of justice. We've talked so many times about getting on the right path. This is it. Giving wealth as an inheritance to those who love me and filling their treasuries. Wisdom is speaking of and for the truth of God. So as we gain wisdom, we gain the enjoyment of life through Christ. And then long-term as well, we have this. And just like Glenn Cobb, one day we spend eternity with God. Hmm. Again, pray for the family. Glenn, a great man. Knew him for many years. Quite a leader. Quite a leader. Let me just make these last few comments. In your quarterly, you'll find the wisdom of pursuing wealth that lasts, and it has a number of comments and scriptures. Quoted from Proverbs 8, 18. With me are riches and honor, lasting wealth, lasting wealth, and righteousness. Another one, hope placed in earthly wealth vanishes. Another, wealth obtained by fraud will dwindle. It dwindles itself, and it dwindles you, and it dwindles those with whom you come into contact, used improperly. Wealth is not forever, earthly wealth. Spiritual wealth 
Yes. A greedy one is in a hurry for wealth. He doesn't know the po that poverty will come to him ultimately from just that. Don't stir up, this is one we're very familiar with, Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Don't stir up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And then in 1 Timothy 6, 17, instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant or to set up their hope on the uncertainty of earthly wealth, but on God himself. To that we can say amen and amen. Can we not? Wisdom speaks to us this morning as a, a virtuous woman talking directly to you and to me. And each of us takes this personally. And if we apply that in our lives, we all know that good things will happen. I say amen to that and thank you, Jesus. We are looking forward, as always, to getting back together. Want everybody to be safe. And uh, we all pray for each other. Let's keep in contact. God loves you, as we say, and it is so true. So do Carol and I love you. Thank you. See you next time, Lord willing. Bye-bye.